very fine educator's definition of gossip is putting two and two together and coming out with five. It's a lovely spring morning in Ellendale, Connecticut. Don't get out, don't get out, I want to help you. Chris, I am not a babe. I know you're not, but I still want to help you. I don't want to take any chances. Come on, now. Now, what, walking up and down that hospital corridor for 10 days. I hello, know Mrs. Nancy. Well, oh, hello, Mr. Teasdale. Hello there. Oh. Oh, Paul. I just slipped, that's all. Oh, hey, Miss sure, Wade. sure. You Chris, could run a footprint. Here, 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 lean on me. Oh. I don't want to lean on you. Go ahead, honey. Just take him. There you are. And, Paul, you get the bag out of the car. Okay. Hello, Mr. B. We're all ready for you. Hello, Marty. We fixed up the sun porch for you. We thought it'd be easier for you, Paul. Then you wouldn't have to climb up and down the stairs. And anyway, it's more cheerful than the boys' room. You sound just like the nurse at the hospital. A good oh. humored one. Oh, she was nice. I liked her. Mother, I've got some nice hot broth on the stove. Oh, good. How would you like a cup of nice hot broth? Hmm? I wouldn't like a cup of nice hot broth. Oh, now, if you're going to Florence Nightingale it all around this place, I'm going to call Doug to come and get All right, all right, all right. I'm sorry. Now, get out of here, all of you. Leave me alone. Uh, does that go for me, too? You, too. Okay. If you don't stop fussing around. All right. No more fussing. I promise. Not an invalid. Oh, was that like an invalid? No. Well, it wasn't up to uh, par. Well, try this. Miss Massey! Oh, oh, you're busy. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Well. Boo! That. that was Mrs. Teasdale, our neighbor. It's a sure sign of spring when Mrs. Teasdale starts poking her head through the window. But you have the look of a house detective. Oh, now stop it. Now I think the least you can do is, is lie down and try Chris. to get a little bit of rest. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. And I... Oh, it's just that I'm so glad to have you here so that I can fuss over you a little bit. Even if you are no grouch. I think I'll take the train in tomorrow. See how the office is holding up. Now, Paul Bells, you promised that doctor you wouldn't go near that office for two weeks. You've only been here two days. Now, if you don't care what happens to you, I do. No office. Oh, hi, boys. What happened to you? Nothing, nothing. Uh, wait a minute. A wreck? Were you in a wreck? I'm okay, I'm okay. Mom, I just have a bloody nose, that's all. So you had a fight, huh? Chris. Peach, you'd better get something on that eye. A little cold water will help. All right. Well, uh, 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 th there's some medicine in the, in the... Have you ever had a fight? Well, well, of course. Not one like that. Well, I have. And you don't, don't usually like to talk about it, for it sounds kind of silly when it's all over. Especially if you've been knocked around a bit. Well... Christine! Oh, yeah, good morning! May I come mm -hmm. in? Of course, come right in. How are you? Oh, I thought you were alone. I didn't know he was here. I just came for a, a, a cup of sugar, but I could get that any other time. Thank you. Oh, that's all right. I'll get uh, Miss, uh, Mrs. T. I must have really frightened her the other day. Yeah. Well, she didn't come to borrow a cup of sugar, that's for sure. Come in for a moment, Christy. Oh. Oh, it's sorry. Right. Oh, perhaps I'd better go. Oh, no, 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 that's fine. We're just going to the kitchen. Okay. Hello, boys. Oh, hi, Mrs. Uh, uh, fellas, could you do that in the dining room? Yeah, sure, Mom. How about some coffee? Oh, no, no, nothing, thank you. Well, I, I think I'll have a cup. Are you sure? Well, if it's ready. It is. Black. All right. Bye. So warm, so soon. Doesn't seem possible, does it? It's almost like summer. Yes. 
Christine, I think you know Mr. Teasdale and I stay pretty much to ourselves, don't you? Yes, sir. I mean, uh, we're not ones to meddle in others' affairs, so to speak. Well, you've been wonderful neighbors to us. Oh, I'm glad you feel that way. It makes what I have to say easier. Oh, is something wrong? But surely you know there is, Christy. You're an intelligent woman. Well, uh, apparently I'm not quite intelligent enough. Uh, what is it? Oh, this is hard for me to say. Christine, do you know what the neighbors are saying? The whole town, as a matter of fact? No, I'm afraid I don't. What? What? Uh, uh, now, I've come to you as a friend. I hope you remember that. As a friend. What is it? Just what is it, Mrs. Teasdale? What? Oh, uh, would you like me to close the door? Perhaps that would be better. Sure, of course. Sorry, fellas. Now, all right? Christine, do you think it's quite right to have that man living here? Well, uh... Now, under the circumstances, uh, yes. Yes, I think it's quite right. But don't you see how it looks? Now, I don't have to tell you that this is a very conservative neighborhood. But when that man moved in, bag and baggage... Uh, uh, his name is Mr. Belzer. Paul Belzer. Oh. Now, please, don't get angry, but... It's getting increasingly difficult not to, Mrs. Teasdale. Well, I'm sorry, but there has been talk about his frequent visits for some time. See? But when he staggered into the house the other day at 11 o'clock in the morning... Staggered? He slipped on the pavement. It was wet. That's well, all. Well, call it what you will. The boys did help him into the house. Yes, they? they did help him into the house. And the younger children have all been sent discreetly away. D discreetly? <laughs> Mrs. Teasdale, Ellen took them to the country because the doctor thought that... The, that... I just don't think I want to hear any more about this. I'm... I... Well, it doesn't matter one iota to me, Christine. Just, just, just a minute now. I believe it was you who saw us arrive. And so if the other neighbors do know about it, then it was you who told them. Didn't you? Well, only when they came to me. I see. Well, they were outraged. They wanted to come over here in a body. Yes. I said I knew there was nothing wrong. And I asked them to let me come to you first as an old friend. I know you want to do the right thing. I am doing the right thing. Now, Mr. Belzer is recuperating from a very serious operation. He has no family, no one to look after him. So I invited him here. Now, in heaven's name, will you tell me what's wrong with that? On the surface, nothing. But on top of all the other times that he's visited here, well, you must admit, it looks very... I don't feel obligated to admit or explain any of my actions to you or to anyone else. Well, that's up to you, of course. But I should think, if you weren't worried about your own reputation, that you would have some concern about your children. This is incredible. I, I just can't believe it. Now, I... I, I just don't owe any explanations to anyone. And, and, and anyway, my children know that I'm not doing anything wrong. Well, I was just making this suggestion in the name of decency. Well, I'm simply suggesting that you leave right now, Mrs. Teasdale. I, I, I think I've heard enough. Very well. I certainly didn't expect you to take it this way. Well, how did you expect me to take it? in the spirit in which it was given. Well, I believe I did. I'll just go out this way. Very well, if it... Did you hear her? I sure did. Telling me as a friend. Huh. My Aunt Minnie. I'm afraid it's true, Mom. People are talking. We've got a couple of snide remarks from the kids, too. The... Well, you just tell the kids to mind their own business. They don't know anything about it anyway. We did. In no uncertain terms, but... Oh! 
Then that's what the fight was all about, huh? Yeah. We overheard a couple of guys down at the locker room in the gym talking and... Well, what, what, what were they saying? Well, you know, at first I didn't recognize who they were talking about. But you've never heard such junk. Then I heard our names mentioned. Your names? Yeah. Look, we know there's nothing wrong, Mom. What? A... But he, he has been staying here and... Well, you know, people, they just don't bother to check details. No. They never do. Please, Mom, don't think about it. Don't, don't give it another thought. It's nothing, really. It's just a bunch of claptrap. Look, I have to give it another thought. Why, I wouldn't dare mention this to Paul, or he would... Well, I'm afraid we're just going to have to live with this scandal for the next couple of weeks. Because the next two weeks are very important, very important to Mr. B. Yeah, we know, Mom. Yes. Well, uh, uh, all right, kids. And don't worry about it. Gossip. Gossip is such a vicarious vice. I just hate it. Paul. Paul. Oh. Oh. Well, where have you been? Oh, out smelling spring. Uh-huh. You had company. Yes. Uh, how'd you know? Kitchen door is open. Were you, uh, eavesdropping? Didn't have to. Oh. Did you hear what she was saying? <laughs> no, I wasn't listening. What'd she say? Oh. oh, nothing, nothing. Just how warm it is for this time of year, you know. No, you said that. Then you did listen. Well, when she started talking about what a good neighbor she was, I walked away. Oh. Well, she is. Is what? Uh, a good neighbor. Oh. What does that mean? What? That, oh. Means oh. Oh. What's that mean? It, it, it just means oh, oh. What's the matter with you, anyway? Nothing. A little 64-stitch incision. You want yes. to see it? Yes. What? You want to see it? Certainly I don't want to see well, it. What a beaut. silly thing to say. Gee, it's all hemstitch. What? Stop that. Not... What do you... Put that down. What do you want the neighbors to look and see you doing a thing like that? Are they Stop watching? It. Huh? Well, well, no. Of course they're not watching, but... Do you care? No, I don't care, but I just think it's a silly thing to do. That's all. If you don't tell me why you're boiling, the whole top of your head's gonna fly off. I'm not boiling. I'm just... Chris, when you get mad, your panda eyes turn green. Look, I am not mad. I'm not mad. I said, uh, what are you laughing at? Oh, oh, who's laughing? You are. You are. What are you up to? Well, don't you like to see your two loving sons happy, old mother of mine? Yes, I do. You remember that little problem we were talking about? What problem? Mrs. Teasdale, remember? Shh, I don't want to well, talk listen, about it. Don't here, worry just... about it, because we figured out a way to take care of everything. Come on, Paul. Uh, 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 wait a minute. I just don't trust them when they act like that. What are you doing? Mrs. Teasdale, how do you like them? Oh, not it. You're going to ruin my reputation, Mrs. Good morning, fellas. Flowers. Oh, who are they for? Well, you, I guess, Mom. Oh, how nice. Thank you. I'm going to be sending me flowers. Ah, uh, good morning, Paul. You didn't have to do this. Oh, I didn't. Man, did I sleep. Oh. What time is it? Uh, it's about 10.30. The kids didn't wake me until late. Oh, it's been lovely. May all your troubles be little ones. Schofield family. <laughs> uh, uh, honey, these can't be for me, I'm sure. I think they are, Mom. No, I don't think so. I think you better take these right back to the floor. Someone's probably waiting anxiously well, just, well, for them. Christine, no. Massey. Yes? Can you forgive me? Can you ever forgive Well, it's a little you. difficult, Mrs. T. Uh, get the door. Get the door. May I come in and meet Mr. Felder? Oh, you are a sly one. No wonder you were so upset. Well, you must have thought I was terrible. 
When I called Helen Benson and told her we were both so ashamed, we just wanted to cry. Told her what? Oh, oh she's a wonderful girl, Mr. Belzer, a wonderful girl. But for 14 years, we've been watching her. And she's a wonderful girl. And her did. Oh, oh, my darling, darling, darling. I, darling, darling. I, I hope you like this. I don't know of anyone else that deserves the happiness that you are going to have. But believe me. Oh, this must be the lucky man. We watched you come and go for some time, Mr. Belzer. Yes, I understand you have. Uh, I, uh, I, I wonder if we could all just calm down for a minute and tell me in plain, simple words what this is all about. Oh, huh? Christine, you must have a million things oh, to no, do. Oh, no, 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 I don't. I, I, Far I be it for me to stick what? my nose into your honeymoon. H honeymoon? Of course. Oh, congratulations to you both. And best wishes for a long and happily married life. It's so exciting. I just had to run over here and tell you how happy I am for you. Now, now, now. But when, as soon as you get back and settle, Mr. Teasdale and I want you to come over for dinner with us. And if you but, can't choose the candy dish, why, take it back to the Boston store and swap it. Come along. Oh, oh, let's leave the two lovebirds alone. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye, Quincy. I, uh, I have a sneaking suspicion that you two are at the bottom of that. <laughs> we are, Mom. Look, look, look out the window. Out the window? Yeah, go ahead and look, Mom. Here, let me hold these for you. Go ahead and look. Uh, yes, you do that. You just hold those. March yourselves right out there, and you take those things off that car. Well, Mom, what are you mad at? Oh, we just want to stop the talk, that's all. Look, you can't stop one rumor by starting another rumor. Well, it was just a little joke. We just, we just wanted to help, that's all. A joke? Don't you realize that every living soul in this town thinks that Mr. Belzer and I are married? Well, what's so bad about that? It's a lie. That's what's bad about it. B Mom, th this is different. No, it is not different. A lie is a lie, no matter which side you tell it from. Now, I should think you'd be old enough to know that. anything with boomerang like this. Oh, Mother, you mean it's not true? No, it's not true, Marnie. It's... Well, look, uh, Mr. Belzer and I plan to be married someday. You... But you know that, but... Well, that's no reason for everybody to just, just jump the gun and, and rush us into it, that's all. Gee, I'm sorry, Mom, but we just wanted to help. All, all right, you can help by going out and take those ridiculous things off that car. Well, now, right now. All right, all right. Mother, when I drove up this morning and looked at the car, I just thought it was so... so wonderful! Marnie, yeah, but... I'm sorry, Paul. I, I, I just don't know what to say. I've never been so embarrassed in my entire life. I don't know what in the world made those boys ever do a thing like that. Maybe they thought it was time that somebody did something. I'm sorry you were embarrassed. <sighs> well, I'm, I'm not really embarrassed. I, I... What were you? Well, I, I, I don't know. I... I'm mad. And I'm embarrassed, too. Was it too close to reality for you, Chris? What do you mean by that? So close it was frightening? Well, no, of course not. What are you talking about? I thought it was fun. Fun? Yes. I heard Mrs. Teasdale last night. And a minute ago when I saw the car, I, I couldn't get my breath. For a moment, I believed it. Because I wanted to believe it. You didn't, did you, Chris? You're just not making any sense at all, Paul. I... No. When you said to Marnie a minute ago that we plan to get married someday. Yes. Well, that someday sounded like Never Never Land. It's like a fairy tale that you enjoy, but you know won't come true. Isn't that the way it is with you, Chris? No. Oh. 
Oh, of course not. That's not the way it is at all. Well, then how is it? Well, if it's... Now, don't cloud up and rain all over me. But let's get this thing straightened out once and for all. Once and for all? Yes. I'm tired of playing cat and mouse with this thing. No wonder people are talking. They've strung it out for a long time. You'll have to admit that. You just don't know anything about women, do you? It's not a thing, marriage. It... Well, marriage is the most important part of a woman's life. Any woman, at 16 or 60, I don't care. And I just don't think that people ought to gossip about it, and I, I don't think they ought to go around making jokes about it. I think they should take it seriously. And I... I want to look nice. And I want flowers and candles, and I want to walk down a long aisle, and I want to look down there and see you waiting for me at the other end of the aisle. Now, if that sounds like a fairy tale, then a fairy tale it is. And if I want to cry, I'm going to cry, no matter what you or anybody else says. I... I just want to be right, that's all. And, and serious and important, that's all. <laughs> Well, I guess I don't know very much about women, but I want to learn. Christine, I love you. I can't live without you. Will you marry me? Well, now a nod won't do for a proposal like that. Will you marry me? Yes. When? You name it. I've got an idea. We can slip down to Winton or New Rochelle and have a quiet little ceremony, just the two of us. And the children. And the children. And Ellen. And Ellen. But they can't go on our honeymoon. I draw the line. And of course, you'll have to ask Doug, too, you know. Okay, Doug. But that's it. And in a church. In a church. Yeah. Well... Ask me again. Would you marry me? No, no, I mean, the whole, the whole thing, you know. Christine. Yes? I love you. I can't live without you. Would you marry me? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, what are you thinking about? Wondering what I ought to wear. This is one man's way of coping with women. He said this the only way to understand a woman is to love her, and then it isn't necessary to understand her. Well, good night. And we'll see you next week.